list the important formulas which are useful to solve the problems on damped free vibration. Let us understand equation of motion for damped free vibration. If we observe this diagram, mass m is connected to the spring with stiffness k and dash pot. Suppose this mass m is displaced through a distance x in a downward direction, then this spring force and this damper force will act in the upward direction. So we have to show this with the help of free body diagram. So here we have to show mass m. Now the displacement is in the downward direction. So acceleration force is also act in the same direction that is in the downward direction. So we have to show that. So how to show this acceleration force that is this mass multiplied by acceleration. So acceleration in terms of x we will write as a x double dot. So I will write here m into x double dot. Then here is the spring with stiffness k. So spring force will act in the upward direction. So spring force we have to show with k into x. And this damper force will also act in the upward direction. So we will show here C into X dot. So this is the free body diagram. Now with the help of free body diagram we can write the equation of motion. So for this downward direction we will consider negative sign. And for this upward direction we will consider positive sign. So from this free body diagram we can say that minus mx double dot is equal to kx plus cx dot. Now we will simplify this equation mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to 0. And if we divide this equation with m then x double dot plus c by mx dot plus k by mx is equal to 0. And this is the equation of motion. Now if we solve this equation of motion by Laplace method then we will get the characteristic equation of the system and it is in the form of a square plus c by m s plus k by m is equal to 0. Now if we solve this then we will get the solution as a two values we will get in terms of s that is s1 and s2. So s1 s2 is equal to c by 2m in bracket minus 1 plus minus under root of 1 minus 4 km by c square bracket complete. So this is the solution. Now we will understand linear or viscous damping. So here when damping force F is directly proportional to velocity x dot. So we can write here F is directly proportional to x dot. So when we take here f is equal to and some constant term c into x dot. So we can write here f is equal to c into x dot. So in this case this type of damping is known as linear or viscous damping. So we have to use here c as a damping coefficient. So how we can write this c? So c is equal to f by x dot and it's a unit. So for the unit of a f is newton and for x dot it is meter per second but it is in the denominator so we have to write the unit newton second per meter so this is the damping coefficient so we can find out the damping coefficient c which is equal to damping force divided by velocity now this is the equation for the linear motion now for the torsional motion we have to write ct instead of c because of torsion so ct is equal to torque divided by theta dot so theta dot is the angular velocity so what is the unit so for torque unit is newton meter and for theta dot unit is rad per second so when we simplify that we will get the unit newton meter second per radians so this is the values this is the Equations for the damping coefficient for linear system and damping coefficient for the torsional system. In solution S1 and S2, here is the term under root of 1 minus 4 km by c square. And when this term is equal to 0, in that case damping coefficient c is equal to critical damping coefficient cc. So how to get this formula for cc? So we have to show this 
under root of 1 minus 4 km by c square is equal to 0. So we can also write 1 minus 4 km by c, c square is equal to 0. So in this case, instead of c, we can write here c, c. That is the critical damping coefficient. And when we simplify this, then we will get c, c is equal to 2 under root of km. So this is the formula for linear system. And now for the torsional system, we can write c, c, t. So here... CC is having suffix T for the torsional system is equal to 2 under root of. Now instead of K that is the spring stiffness K we have to write KT and instead of M we have to write I that is the mass moment of inertia. So these two formulas used to find out the critical damping coefficient. Now we will move next to damping factor or damping ratio. So its a notation is zeta. So zeta is the ratio of this damping coefficient to the critical damping coefficient that is C by CC. Now for this CC we can put the value 2 under root of Km. So when we put this value now we will get the formula for zeta. So these two formulas used to calculate zeta. Now for the torsional system we can use CT divided by CCT. So which is equal to CT divided by 2 under root of KTI. Now how to get the solution in terms of zeta. So this is the solution in terms of C that is damping coefficient M that is mass and K that is spring stiffness. So we have to write the solution S1, S2 in terms of zeta that is the damping factor. So we have to write here which is equal to omega N in bracket minus zeta plus minus under root of zeta square minus 1. So when we have value for omega n that is the natural frequency and this value of zeta then we can find out this solution. Then we will move to the next that is damped natural frequency. So natural frequency is omega n but when the damper is provided then what is the damped natural frequency. So its a notation is omega d. And omega d is equal to omega n under root of 1 minus zeta square. Unit is radians per second. Now damped frequency. So damped frequency fd. fd is equal to omega d by 2 pi. Unit is hertz. And damped time period td. td is equal to 2 pi by omega d second. Unit is second. So all these formula are important to solve the problems. Now we find out the equivalent damping coefficient CQ when the dampers are in series and when the dampers are in parallel. If we observe this diagram here the dampers C1 and C2 are connected in series where C1 is having displacement X1 and C2 is having displacement X2. Force F is applied on both the dampers. So from this diagram we can say that total displacement X is equal to X1 plus X2. Now we can also write in terms of velocity that is X dot is equal to X1 dot plus X2 dot. So how we can define this X dot that is F divided by C equivalent is equal to X1 dot. So this X1 is related to C1. So we can write here is equal to F by C1 plus F by C2 where F is the damping force. So if we simplify this so on both sides this FF is getting cancelled and we can write 1 by C equivalent is equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. Now we will move when the dampers are in parallel. So here force F is applied on both the dampers C1 and C2 and now these two are connected in parallel. Now if we observe for this whole system the displacement is x is common because c1 is also having displacement x c2 is also having displacement x and for the whole system the displacement is having x because here these two are connected in parallel so how we can write the formula so damping force f is equal to c1 x dot plus c2 x dot so what is this F? So F is C equivalent X dot. 
is equal to c1 plus c2 bracket complete x dot. So on both side x dot is getting cancelled. Therefore c equivalent is equal to c1 plus c2. So this is the formula to calculate equivalent damping coefficient when dampers are connected in parallel. Now we will understand over damped system, critically damped system and under damped system. So we will understand the behavior for these systems with the help of diagram. So on the vertical line amplitude x is there and on horizontal line time t we have to show. Now we have seen that for the doors the dampers are connected. Suppose we will consider this as a door and this line as a mean position. Now what will happen for the over damped system? Now we will consider this is the door placed at mean position. Now if we give the initial displacement to the door. So suppose I give here the initial displacement and the door is displaced from the mean position with some amplitude x. Now because of over damped system it will return to its mean position but the required time is infinite to reach the mean position. Then this behavior is for over damped system and this zeta that is the damping factor is greater than 1 for this over damped system. So we will draw here the diagram. So here initial amplitude x is there so we will select this point and it will reach it will take the infinite time to reach the mean position. So how we can write here. So time required to reach the mean position is very large. So finally it will not reach the mean position and here the time required is infinite to reach the main position. So this is the diagram. Then we will move critically damped system. So we will consider again this is the door which is placed at main position and if I displace the door that is the initial displacement is taking place. Now for the critically damped system within the shortest possible time it will reach the mean position. So here within the shortest possible time it will reach the mean position. So I will show with the help of diagram. So here is the initial displacement and within the shortest possible time it will reach the mean position. So here is the during this time period it will reach the mean position. So in this case zeta is equal to 1. Now for under damped system. So again I will place door at the main position and if we give the initial displacement then it will oscillate on both sides of the main position and finally it will come to rest at the main position. Now we have to show this behavior. So how to show? So initial displacement is given. And now when we remove this door, then it will, it will oscillate on the about this main position that it will move to the opposite side of the main position. So we have to show this. So here, then again it will move to this side. And finally it will reach to the main position. So this is the behavior of under damped system. And in this case, zeta is less than 1. Let us understand the formula for logarithmic decrement or dk which is applicable for under damped system. So what is its definition? Natural logarithm of the ratio of any two successive amplitudes on the same side of the mean position. So we have to refer the diagram for under damped system. So here on this vertical line we have to show amplitude and on horizontal line we have to show the time period. So this is the under damp system. So if we observe on horizontal line we have to write omega dt where omega d is the natural frequency of the damp system. Now for the first amplitude we will take here as x1. 
Now if we observe this definition then we have to refer the amplitude on the same side of the main position. So we will refer the amplitude on the upper side of the main position. So here is the first amplitude is x1, second amplitude x2, third amplitude x3. So we have to take the ratio of any two successive amplitude. So we can take the ratio of x1 by x2 or x2 by x3 or x3 by x4 and so on. Now in the same way we have to show the time period. So for the first if we observe here the time is 0 and then after the completion of first cycle. So here at this point suppose the cycle starts at this point then this is the second point that is the completion of the first cycle. There is time period T1. Then the completion of the second cycle is at this point. So at this end we have to take the time period T2. Now if we take the difference of any two time periods that is T2 minus T1 or T3 minus T2 then we will get Td is equal to 2 pi by omega d. That is the time period of damped system is equal to 2 pi by omega d. Now with reference to this diagram we can find out the value of delta. So this is the under damped system. So equation of motion is small x is equal to capital X e raised to minus omega n zeta t sine of omega d t plus phi. But in case of maximum amplitude this sine of omega d t plus phi is equal to 1. So for this ratio we have to refer only first term that is small x is equal to capital X e raised to minus omega n zeta t. Now as per the definition we have to write logarithmic decrement delta is equal to log to the base e x1 by x2. So what is this x1? So if I put here 1 suffix 1 then we have to consider the time period of the at the end of first cycle that is t1 that is capital X e raised to minus omega in zeta t1 and here for x2 we have to take capital X e raised to minus omega in zeta t2 now x x is getting cancelled because x is the maximum amplitude so again log e log e to the base e if we simplify this we will take this denominator term in the numerator so in here this minus omega n will become plus omega n. Minus omega n zeta t1 plus omega n zeta t2. So omega n zeta is a common term. We will take outside the bracket and inside the bracket t2 minus t1. Now here this log e to the base e term we can cancel. And we can simply write omega n zeta td. Because t2 minus t1 as per the diagram is td. And td is 2 pi by omega d. Now how we can define this omega d? So omega d is equal to omega n under root of 1 minus zeta squared. So here this omega n and this omega n is getting cancelled because omega d is in the denominator. So we can simply write delta is equal to 2 pi zeta divided by under root of 1 minus zeta square. Suppose there are n number of amplitudes that is x1, x2, x3 up to xn. Then how to calculate this logarithmic decrement delta. So delta is equal to 1 divided by n minus 1 log to the base e in bracket x1 by xn. So n may be any number that is a, n may be 12, 13, 15, 20. So we have to use this formula to calculate delta. Now what is the relation in between damping factor zeta and delta. So here is the formula zeta is equal to delta divided by under root of 4 pi square plus delta square. So these are the important formulas which are useful to solve the problems.